10 draft tips and tricks for beginners to help you dominate your draft. Psst. If you stay till the end, I got a bonus tip for you. Super useful. I can't believe it's finally here. It's draft season. Let's get it started. For everyone new to drafts, the most important thing you need to know is if the fantasy football season was like building a house, the draft will be your foundation. You want to have a solid foundation to start your year off right, and then you build upon that through the waiver wire and trades. The team you start with will not be the team you have when you go on your championship run. Some people will unfortunately get injured. Some late round players you have will skyrocket into stardom. You will trade some players away. Number one like Kevin Garnett. Anything is possible! I've been playing fantasy football for 15 years, and I have seen people win in every way imaginable. Starting off running back, running back. Wide receiver, wide receiver. Quarterback early. Tight end early. Hero RB, where you grab one running back and then wait on the running backs till you get to the middle or later rounds. Zero RB, where you forget about running back entirely until the later rounds. Long story short, you can win with almost any strategy. So if anybody tells you there's a magical strategy out there that's just better than all the others and it's going to work every time, that's just not true. There is no specific strategy that's going to work every time. But with these tips and tricks, it will help you adapt throughout the draft and make sure you come out on top. Number two. Know your league rules. Every league is going to have different rules from the roster to the scoring to how the waiver wire works. Do you have two wide receivers or do you have three wide receivers? Do you have one flex or two flex? How many points do you get for touchdowns? Four or six? This completely changes the value of players. Jalen Hurts is more valuable in a four point scoring touchdown league because he rushes in so many touchdowns. When Jalen Hurts runs in a touchdown and he gets six points because it's a rushing touchdown, not a passing touchdown, that gives him an advantage. But if all touchdowns are equal, it helps a quarterback like Joe Burrow, who may not rush in as many touchdowns, but he's gonna throw a lot of touchdowns. So it puts them more on an even playing field, whereas Jalen Hurts would have an advantage in the rushing touchdown area. So check your settings to make sure you know exactly what you're getting into. This will put you in the right mindset for going into a draft. Number three. Understand value. All positions are not created equal. Some positions are more valuable than other positions and maybe not the ones you're thinking of. Initially, you're probably thinking quarterback is the most valuable because they're the most valuable person on the team, right? Well, not necessarily. In fantasy football, the value comes from scarcity. How many of that position are you gonna be starting on a week to week basis and how many are actually good enough to start? Let me show you. Assuming you're in a normal league, most leagues have one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, one tight end, and one flex. That means at a bare minimum, every week, you're starting two to three running backs or two to three wide receivers. Well, if you only need one tight end and you only need one quarterback in a 12 person league, top 12, top 15 of that position is pretty much all you're really looking at. Whereas running backs, everybody in your league needs two of them every week at a minimum. Plus you need a flex and between two and three wide receivers. So because you start so many more wide receivers and running backs every week, more of them are going to be drafted, meaning the scarcity for those positions are a lot higher because they go faster because everybody knows this. So a level of scarcity, meaning how many startable assets do we have that we actually want to start? So you have running backs at the top, right below that, wide receivers, down a little bit, quarterbacks, down a little bit, tight ends, way down, kicker, even lower, defense. Defense is you change out on a week-to-week -week basis. Same thing with kicker, depending on the kicker. Number four. Avoid risk early. At the beginning of your draft, you want some surefire hits. You want two to three players that you know are gonna be tried and true dominators for your team. You want to guarantee performance. The reason I say this is the top two or three rounds, they're all good, but some are riskier than others. Some are coming off of major injury and you haven't seen them back yet. May wanna stay away. Or they've had a major change in the offense and there's a chance that they get less volume. You may not wanna grab that person. You want steady Eddie dominators. Guys that you really know are gonna be good every week. That's what you're looking for. Not the volatile, you want consistency. Save the volatility for later. Number five. Tier-based drafting. Prior to the draft, you should have every position separated into tiers. Tiers are groups of players that you think are gonna score about the same. 
let me show you what I mean. So these are tiers. These players are grouped about how I think they're going to be scored. Tier one through tier five. So when you're drafting using tiers, as these players are taken off the board, you can cross them off. And then you will know how many more players are in the tier. This will help you know who to select when you're in your draft. Because instead of looking at these players as individuals, you look at them in groups. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say you're in the eighth spot in your draft and two running backs, four wide receivers, and one tight end have come off the board. And you really want one of those top tier wide receivers. Well, you would refer to your tiers. Will top tier wide receiver make it back to you? Well, if you look at your tiers, Justin Jefferson's gone, Tyreek Hill is gone, Mar Chase is gone, and Stephon Diggs is gone. That leaves Cooper Cup is the last person in this tier. So if you want a tier two wide receiver, you gotta grab one now because it's not making it back around to you. That's just one of many ways to use tiers. You can compare different positions using tiers. If there's three running backs in a tier and four wide receivers in a tier, it may help you know which player to pick first. Number six. When you're drafting, try to remember Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. The drafts aren't gonna go as you expected. Sometimes they're not gonna go how you mocked them. Players are gonna get taken right ahead of you. So what you're gonna wanna do is not just have a backup plan, but have a backup plan to your backup plan. So when it's coming down to your pick, don't just have one person in mind that you wanna grab. Have multiple options just in case that person you wanna take gets grabbed before you. Trust me, it happens all the time. It happens to me in every draft. I got a guy in my league. He must be watching my content because every year he takes my guys. Every single year he snipes me. And for whatever reason, I'm always near him in a draft. I don't know how this works. Joey, are you out there plotting on me? Whatever, you're doing a great job drafting. Getting on my doggone nerves. Good job though, you're grabbing players I like. Obviously they're good. In your fantasy football draft, assume that things will go wrong because they will. There's a guy that you really want and you're hoping that he drops to you. He's only three picks away. Then he gets picked. Now you're on edge. You're freaking out. You're tilting. It's okay. Calm down. When you panic, you make bad draft picks. Your league mates are gonna take the people you want. It's bound to happen. It's happened in every draft I've ever been in. So have a plan and then a backup plan and then a backup plan to the backup plan. You should be reading the board and anticipating what's gonna happen and have multiple plans. Let's say it doesn't go as you planned. You thought you were gonna get that guy and he's not there anymore. It's okay. Even if you make a mistake and grab a person that you had no interest in grabbing, it's okay. Don't let that ruin the rest of your draft. Don't let them in here. This is your safe space. Acknowledge that it happened and move on to the next pick. You got a long draft. Don't let it ruin your draft. You own this. This is what you can control. The late great Kobe Bean Bryant didn't make every one of his shots. You're gonna miss sometimes, but he kept shooting. You're gonna keep drafting. What would the Mamba do? Don't panic. The next pick's coming up. You'll do better. Number seven. Swing for the fences. After you set that foundation for your team, when you get late in your draft, you wanna swing for the fences. You want to grab players with upside. You don't wanna grab an older player that's gonna give you solid points. You're not looking for solid late in the draft. You're looking for game changing upside. You want players that have the chance to take it to the next level, not a player that you know what he's gonna do. You're not looking for a player with a low ceiling. You want high ceiling late. You also wanna know whether or not you have something in this player. You want to know in the first two to three weeks whether or not they're worthy of staying on your team because there will be players that you wanna pick up and you won't pick them up because you have this average receiver that you don't wanna drop. He's too good to drop and too bad to play. That shouldn't be on your roster. Shoot for upside late, swing for the fences. Number eight. Play chess, not checkers. When people draft, they tend to focus only on their team. And though it is important to know what's going on on your roster and have a plan, it's also very important to look at what the people are doing around you. This way you can see trends coming a lot easier. And if you see five wide receivers that come off the board, but that's creating value at the running back position, you may wanna start a new trend and pick the running back because they're creating value by their trend. This can also help when you combine the previous tip of tier-based drafting. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say you look at the draft board. It's the fourth round and the next two picks after you, neither one of them have a quarterback. Analyzing their team, I see that they're pretty balanced. Two wide receivers each and a running back. That means 
Saints, they'll probably go running back in the next round, but they also could be going quarterback. Now, this is important when you look at your tiers and see how many quarterbacks you actually want. So if you look down here, the next three quarterbacks, Justin Fields, Justin Herbert, and Trevor Lawrence. There's also Dak Prescott, but he's really not in the same class. Now let's refer back to our tiers. Everybody in tier one is gone and two players in tier two are gone. The only people left, Justin Herbert and Justin Fields. Now let's check back to the draft board. There's two people in front of you and there's only two quarterbacks left in the tier that you want. In this situation, you grab the quarterback with your first pick because when it comes back around, the quarterback tier will be dropped if both of them grab a quarterback. Now there's a chance that they don't grab quarterback here. Everybody isn't a quarterback in the first four rounds kind of guy, but there's also a chance that they both grab them and now you have to get a lower tier quarterback. It's still early, so it'd be fun if you missed out, but if you are aiming for a quarterback, missing out on that upper tier would be unfortunate. You may be able to anticipate someone else's pick and then make a move earlier than they do. Number nine. Know your ADP. ADP stands for average draft position. A lot of people use the average draft position while they're drafting on the platform. This can dramatically help you predict what people will do. And average draft positions change depending on the platform you're drafting on. ADP isn't gonna be the same on ESPN or Yahoo or Sleeper or CBS if you're still using that for some reason. If you can, have your own list of players that you like. Don't use the same ADP as everyone else, preferably separate separated into tiers, please. It really helps in the drafting process. Number 10. Mock, 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 mock draft. Think of the draft like a test. You need to practice as much as possible to prepare for this test. This is the end all be all. Like I said, you got waivers, you got trades, all that stuff, but you want to nail the draft if you can. And the best way to do that is by practicing specifically on the platform you're playing on. If you're playing on Yahoo, don't practice on ESPN. If you're practicing on ESPN, but you play on Sleeper, you are wasting your time. The average draft positions are completely different. You can find massive value. You can exploit the flaws in the matrix. The differences in ADP, depending on what platform you're drafting on, creates value everywhere. And it also overrates the heck out of some people. Some people are going way too high on platforms. And on that same platform, other players are going way too low. It's important to know this going in so you're not surprised about where people are. Because I can tell you this, if you mock draft on Yahoo and you draft anywhere else, you are going to be very confused. Yahoo is notorious for having crazy ADP. ADP. To be fair, ESPN ain't much better. I feel like Sleeper's probably the best ADP out there. At least that's what I've found. Also, their mock drafts are so good. I know it's really annoying to mock draft on ESPN and Yahoo. Sleeper is clearly the best, which is why I play there. Mock drafting on Sleeper is awesome. You can start up one like that. You can get in whatever spot you want. You don't have to worry about other people. You can just mock, 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 mock. And if you know your draft spot ahead of time, make sure you mock draft in these specific draft slot that you're going to be drafting in on the same platform. And don't just try out one strategy. Try out a bunch of different strategies. What's it look like when you start with the running back? What does it look like when you start with the wide receiver? What happens if you grab a quarterback in the first three rounds? What if Travis Kelsey drops to you? Do you like your team better if you get a late round quarterback? How's your build when you do zero RB? Are you able to find running backs late? What about running back, running back? Do you find that you like the receivers in the following round? These are the type of questions you need to have. You need to mock draft in the spot that you have for that draft, assuming you know it early, and you just need to try out a bunch of different things and find what you like. Now make sure you're still flexible, you can change, but if it does happen to where the plan that you like the most can't work out because of what happened ahead of you, it's important to not panic because you've practiced this. When you're comfortable drafting from a bunch of different strategies, the odds that you get flustered are a lot lower because you train for this. Mock draft as much as possible before your draft. Trust me, you'll thank me later. I got a bonus tip for you. Um, let the draft come to you. Let the draft come to you. Don't go into a draft with such rigid opinions on what you're going to do. 
it's going to cause you to miss out on value all the time. If you decide that you're only going to do running back, running back to start the draft, and you have the ninth pick, and every pick off the board are all running backs, that's no longer a viable strategy. You're just going to be behind on all of the running backs because newsflash, everybody ahead of you just got the best ones. In this scenario, you grab wide receivers because they left Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase on the board. You need to be flexible in drafts. I got a bonus, bonus tip for you. This bonus tip is a little more advanced than the previous tips I've given, but it'll help. Know your league. If you've been drafting in the same league for multiple years, go back to the previous drafts and see what happened. Did they draft running back early? Does the guy next to you always take tight ends early? Who sniped you last year? And what players did they snipe you with? These are all useful things that you can keep in your mind when you're drafting. Look at who you're drafting next to and remember what they did last year and the year before and the year before. Yes, overall trends tend to move with fantasy, but some people tend to do the same thing. It's a little bit of a hardcore tip, but find those trends. It can be useful. Do y'all remember those Goosebump books made by R.L. Stein? They're choose your own adventure books. Well, I used to read them as a kid and I thought that this would be really cool. So I got like a choose your own adventure. Where do you feel like you are in your fantasy football journey? If you'd like to watch me do a full draft from different positions, click here. If you want quick recaps of mock drafts, click here. If you want to go through rankings, click down here. All right, choose your own adventure. I'll see you soon.